Welcome back to the Stoop Football Fans. It's your boy Lolo. I got Mark here, hey, of hey. course. This is a Leeds United video, so <laughs> clearly we got Mr. James here in New Orleans. He's all nice and warm. Talk about 70 degree weather. In Celsius, that's like a billion degrees. <laughs> and uh, we're sitting here, we can't even sit on the stoop. 20, 20 degrees Celsius. <laughs> we can't even sit on the stoop. Uh, so we, we had to we, carve we got, out we got, some we got, ice. We got snow up to our knees here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you poor songs. Uh, yeah, man. So let, let's dig into it. Let's get into the match that happened yesterday. Everton leads United. Um, ooh, ooh, man, <laughs> dude, dude. How how does Leeds United not come away with a point? With one point, just one mm. point. Uh, much less win the match. Uh, for me. Before I, before I turn it over to James and Mark and I go inside and get warm while he talks for a while, um, <laughs> what I want to say is I, what a tale of two halves. I mean, Everton won the first half. Everton clearly won the first half. Uh, Leeds United was very strong for like about the first five minutes. And then I think Everton caught up and was like, okay, we'll let you do that. We'll let you do that. Um, but we put a nickel into Digne and he's turned on for this whole match and he was he was on fire yeah. every time he ran up the pitch to attack Rafinha could not keep up with him mm -hmm. and even on on that first goal Rafinha caught up to him but then couldn't make a block you know why because Rafinha is an attacker uh, and so I don't know that whole goal was all messed up but then the second half starts I haven't even sat down to start watching again, and there's a goal. Yeah. And I'm like, fantastic, here go here go Leeds United. I think I had said moments before to you in a it tweet. It was not going to be 2-0. Guaranteed this will not end 2-0. <laughs> uh, I right. had my doubts. Everton looked so good in that first half. And then they were matching Leeds' intensity. They were on the road. Stride for stride. But that pace, the Leeds boys are built for it. Everton, you're not. Not so much. Mm -mm, no. Uh, but, you know, and look at it this way. The second half, Leeds United won the match, 1-0, <laughs> the yeah. second half. Yeah. And they were running until the end. And if it wasn't for some magnificent saves from that Olsen dude, that who the yeah. hell is that guy? Yeah, no doubt. Um, Mini Pickford. Unbelievable. And then, you know, a lot of people given – Poor Tyler Roberts, a lot of crap for not smashing in that last chance. But, dude, uh, Bamford smashed it at him. Mm. Bamford was like, who, 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 you? And yeah. Tyler was like, you almost saw his heart pop out I, of his chest. I Going thought, like, me? I thought it just a little a little kick to, to Costa, who was sitting there wide that, open. That just shows you he would much rather smash it to Tyler Roberts <laughs> than let Costa get anywhere near it. <laughs> so, James... How am I doing so far? I think, I think you've pretty much nailed it. Um, I would say, let's go back to the first half. Uh, so we were burned essentially by a couple of defensive mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we got to learn at this level, right? You make a, a mistake on defense and, you know, in the premiership, you're going to get burned. And we ended up getting burned. Uh, that first goal was a, vari a variety of things yeah, happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, strike kind of should have maybe come out and more aggressive. You let the ball go past him. Cooper didn't close in on Sigurdsson. Melier could have come out maybe a bit more aggressive uh, and did not. So, you know, a lot of things happened. You had, you had uh, I think Harrison it was who slipped because it's a new pitch. Oh, that so pitch was of, crazy. He had a lot of footing problems yesterday. A lot of people losing their footing. Uh, Alioski lost his footing a couple of times. Uh, Harrison lost his. There's a lot of people, a lot of uh, players slipping on the surface. That was a, a calamity, that, that first goal. Second goal, uh, you had a flick on, and then you had, you know, Calvert Lewin kind of, you know, uh, he, he capitalized on the flick on, but Coopers or somebody should have been at that far post. So you had two, we basically allowed two very soft, cheap goals. So that put us behind the eight ball right off, right off the bat. So we're down 2 0. Uh, after I thought we played pretty well that first half. I didn't think that they I thought it was a pretty even first half I thought we had opportunities mm -hmm. to score, you know, Olsen made a good save on the header uh, uh, You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't think we played that badly in the first half I mean, I thought that you know, we probably deserved the goal at some point in the first half uh, Maybe you know two to one 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 somewhere around there 
um, would have been a, would, I think would have been a fair uh, tally at halftime. Yeah. Then the second half comes and we just completely dominate the second half. I mean, yeah. that was just, uh, I mean, a series of wave after wave of attacks launched against the Everton defense. They were obviously winded uh, and we went after them and yeah, should have, should have gotten a point out of it. Maybe even three. Uh, I think it was frustrating. It was a frustrating match. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of my mates over there were, you know, very down on us uh, at halftime. I wasn't that way. I mean, I was like, look, you know, we played well enough to get a goal in there somewhere. We, I mean, we allowed two. We could have played better defensively, yes, but it wasn't a disaster. And earlier in the season, you know, when we fell behind like that, you saw the team kind of get down on itself. You saw us give up more and more goals, and it was sort of an avalanche, you know, effect. Yeah. Uh, snowball effect. But. Well, that's that's the Leicester effect, I think, right. now. Now, a- after going down against Leicester, a team that does not drop points from winning positions, mm-hmm. um, right. Brendan Rodgers has been fantastic a- about getting his team to not drop points from winning positions. But you guys being able to come back against a team that people are talking about competing for the title, much less being in Europe, like a very, very good team coming back and then defeating them and winning for the rest of the season and maybe the rest of these guys' personal lives, they're right. never going to feel like they're out of it. They're never going to feel like, they're, like, they're, like they can't come back and win a match. And I felt that spirit was there. Like unlike when we were watching the Arsenal match and, uh, you know, we're watching it live stream and Cantax there going, it's done, it's done. And I'm going, no, no. I, all you need is one goal and then all you need is another goal. But but, but you just need one goal. You, you need a goal to start it off. And then you guys come back from halftime, you get that goal. And then it was on. It was mm-hmm. on. And how you did not score is is just, I think it's what comes down to the being an elite team being a premier league team and being a championship team so you guys are still like in the middle ground right now of your first season playing with a championship quality uh, caliber players um but uh, so that's to me that's the difference is the reason you were you guys were two nil down and it wasn't two two or nil nil um is just those chances they had two chances in the first half and they had two goals you guys had a bunch of opportunities. You you hit the crossbar. You hit, uh, and it was just yeah. Just, chances not not ended because yeah. so much of the play was beautiful I mean, and that, great to watch. The the uh, the Alioski strike Dude. that should have been that would have been a gorgeous goal, but it oh, just yeah. uh, that ended up hitting the crossbar. Didn't yeah, it? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, um, yeah, I think, I think, I think you're right. I think that we're maturing as a team. I think that even though we have a lot of, you know, players who are, you know, over the age of 27, you know, play a lot of players who are 27, 28, 29 years yeah. old, none of these players really have premiership experience or at least extended premiership yeah. experience. So now they're kind of learning. And you're right. I mean, you know, they had two chances, you know, and of course we could sort of handed them those chances. They capitalized on those chances, got the two goals. You know, fair play to them. Uh, and meanwhile, you know, but the second half, we come back and we show what we're made of. I mean, the effort was there. The result eluded us. Uh, but that's going to happen in the premiership. I mean, you can't mm-hmm. surrender soft goals, cheap goals in the premiership. You're going to get burned. Yeah. That's been happening to us all year. And going back to earlier matches, even last week, uh, you know, with Lester, uh, you, had, you had situations where communication, you know, between Melier, Cooper, uh, you know, Ailing, uh, Stroik, and all I mean, it's all a little bit off, you know, because of injuries. I mean, we just haven't had any continuity in the back line, and that has that has killed us. I mean, it really has. I mean, it's been you have to that, that's all based on on communication. I mean, the back line is all based on communication, and communication, you know, is, is off. I mean, it's, it's killing us. At, you know, t- at, you know, really, pr- you know opportune times in the matches for the for the opposition and they're taking advantage of that and so that's you know what do you i mean what are you going to do um yeah that first goal for example was 
yes, uh, Luca Dean got the cross in, and yes, it was beautiful. Yeah, but it was the pass yeah. before that that was well, really beautiful. The goal happened because of miscommunication back there. You had Calvin yeah. Phillips and I think Liam Cooper tangling yeah. up together, and then you have Ailing flailing. I don't know what he what he <laughs> yeah. was doing, and and they're, well, they're all looking. Too, and Melier didn't move. Yeah. What was that? I mean, Ailing was caught up the pitch. And then we really had yeah. no one tracking back, yeah. uh, you know, to, to stop uh, Digne. And, you know, Digne's well, Ruff- crossing. It was Rafinha. Yeah, you know, Rafinha was on him. And, yeah, he can yeah. keep up with him, but he's not going to get the key block in because he's a, he's no. an attacker, you know? Mm-hmm. No, exactly. Um, exactly. And that, that's not, yeah, tracking back and, and playing defense is not Rafinha's thing. So, you know, and Digne, you know, again, Fair play to them. I mean, being able, you know, put a beautiful cross into the box. Uh, Sigurdsson was there. And he was there, and, and he finished it. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe, you know, it's like I was telling uh, Mark, you know, maybe Melier should have come in and been more aggressive yeah, you and, you know, come that. out yeah. off his line, you know, maybe three yards, two or three yards off his line. And maybe he could have, uh, you know, stopped it or at least got a hand on, uh, on Sigurdsson's uh, shot. But that's why it was, you know, pretty easy. Yeah. You know, you just slotted it right past him. So it was. I mean, I don't know, you know, uh, those, those matches happen, man. And, uh, yeah. you know, again, it's frustrating, you know, because, I mean, we deserve at least a point out of that match, or at least that's the way you feel afterwards. And uh, a lot of people are not happy today. Obviously, a lot of Leeds fans are not happy. But, you know, look, I thought we showed maturity. I thought we showed effort in the second half. I mean, we showed what we're made of. And, yeah. you know, we can take a lot away, a lot of positives away from that match. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, after, yeah, after that match, I didn't feel like, we had just given up and handed them the match. I mean, and I felt that way earlier in the season about a couple of matches. But I feel like now we are, we're, we're seeing ourselves and we know that we deserve to be where we are. Yeah. Well, a phrase kept popping into my head uh, as I was, you know, watching some of these um, post-match things. I watched All Leads TV, by the way. Fantastic. Joe and Oscar gave a great, um, they were live for like five hours yesterday. It was ridiculous. Oh, wow. Um, Joe was fucking yawning at the end. <laughs> he was like, he's like, sorry, mate. <laughs> it was like midnight. <laughs> but I was like, dude, turn your computer off already. But, um, but something that just kept popping into my head was the phrase moving the goalposts. You know that phrase? Um, so it's been tossed around a lot in, um, in politically these days, but mm. where, uh, that's what I kept thinking. So in Leeds United fans, the goalpost was 17th place. Get yeah. 17th place. And we will be ecstatic with anything else. Well, now you lose to Everton, who's a very good team. Yeah. With one of the best managers possibly in the world. And they're furious. And I'm like, talk about moving the goalpost. Yeah. You guys gave Everton the match of their lives. They were oh, high fiving yeah. after the match like they had won the World Cup. Um, <laughs> and you saw them like, Fuck, did you see me? Uh, yeah. Did you see that fucking dude? Did you see? Oh, oh my God, I'm so tired. I need a bath. Yeah. You know, and Leeds United fans are pissed off. And I get it. It's because you're doing so well and because you do take it to every team and there is always the possibility of winning every single match um but moving the goalpost have have you james officially moved the goalpost from 17th place to top 10 or is the goalpost europe yeah right. have you personally I, I, yeah I, I agree i mean i think that expectations have changed i mean i think that uh, they've obviously risen uh, for this team, and so now people are looking at, you know, a top 10 finish, even the possibility of Europe, and, um, you know, I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's there, I mean, it's definitely possible, is it realistic? I mean, I don't know, and I mean, <laughs> I still, I still think, I still think we're a 10 to 15 team, you know, someplace in there. I mean, we had, we hadn't taken all six points from Everton since, like, 1990, 1991. Yeah. So, but to I mean, win yeah. at Ellen Road against them, from what I rem- from what I remember hearing, you win at Ellen Road against them, and th- that's why this yeah. was a little harsh. Mm. Yeah, for exactly. some fans. Exactly. And uh, and this year, and this year, look, I mean, our first uh, you know first year up in a long time, in 16 years. 
And, you know, we play Everton twice. We take, you know, three points. I mean, I'll take that, you know? Yeah, yeah man. Uh, Dude. But, uh, yeah, expectations have changed. Uh, and they've, they've definitely been elevated. I don't know, you know, to what point realistically. Uh, like I said, you know, we have a chance at Europe. But I think we definitely have a chance to finishing, you know, anywhere from 8 to 15. Uh, that's And that's fine. Um, but, yeah. Dude, I mean, shit, if... If me, an Arsenal fan, if I, if I'm thinking for my team, Europe, 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 we can still do it. We can still do it. We can still do it. You guys are like one point below or or two points below Arsenal with a game in hand. With a game in hand. So yeah. if I think Arsenal can do it, then why the hell can't you? Like, I think Leeds United have just, just as much of a shot as Arsenal because so many teams are doing weird weird things are happening like West yeah. Ham may end up above Chelsea Tottenham uh Man United like isn't yeah. that West Ham could crazy. be top five and they were near relegation last year weren't they yeah they were like I a mean point out we said at the beginning of the season that David they, Moyes wasn't was gonna, gonna last get, yeah 10 wouldn't, matches. wouldn't wouldn't make it to Christmas so yeah. and they've done most of this without Mikel Antonio. Mm-hmm. He's back being He's fantastic. Back. Yeah. And Jesse Lingard is there, who mm-hmm. we thought was going to be a non-factor and then and gets a brace yeah, on his hey. first one. So That's that's a nice um, nice little January we, pickup. We got to we got to do a, a West Ham show um, cuz they're 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 just too good yeah. to ignore. Um anyway. Yeah, I missed, um I miss Upton Park, man. That was a good place, you know. Oh, dude. I mean this the whole the whole London the London Stadium I don't know. You know, it's uh, it's it seems like a soulless environment, you know, for them compared to up, you know, Upton Park and the Bowling Ground. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, no, I agree with you. I think that this season, I think that there's a wealth of possibilities. I mean, obviously, it's it's, it's a season where mm-hmm. virtually anything can happen. I think you know, you look at the, the bottom three teams right now. I, I I've been saying for a long time, there's the those are the three teams that are going down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and right. I think that, that that was solidified this past week. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think you're going to see them going down. I mean, had we won that match against Everton, uh, you know, it would have been 18 points clear of Fulham. I mean, then you're then you're looking at you know six game a six game swing yeah. that has to happen a six match yeah. swing. Yeah, and that's and it's just yeah. not that's you know with the with the side that Fulham's putting out there, it's not going to happen. And then when, when you look at like team expenditures, I mean, I think you know we're the only teams that are below us as far as team expenditures are Fulham, uh, West Brom. And um, I forget the third team. I don't know if it's Sheffield United or not. But so we're still like we're still like fourth from the bottom as far as spending in the Premiership. So we still have a lot to improve upon there as far as bringing in new players. So you know through the summer transfer uh, markets, so that's going to be you know there's a lot of hope. I mean, there's a lot of hope and a lot of optimism I think around Leeds right now. And uh, yesterday didn't dampen it at all for me. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. I'm still optimistic. And still hopeful. I mean, it's, it's you know those those sort of matches happen. So whatever. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. move on. In the end, onwards and upwards. That's in it. the end, I would still be. I would. I the if if I were a super Leeds fan, I would be upset with the result, but not the performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough to play a game like that and play that well and walk away without a point. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. So, no, it's, 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 frust- it's frustrating, but then I think to where we were, you know, five years ago, and then never, never dreaming of this moment. So playing Everton, even not maybe getting the result that we felt that we deserved, but playing well in that second half, playing that well in that second half, and then thinking back to, like I said, five years ago, when I never thought I would, you know, see this day. Hey, I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Um, so, so, um, yeah, well, um, I, the last thing that I wanted to mention, just cause we kind of got to mention it, um, is why the hell would you guys buy a turf from London? You know, you have issues with London. <laughs> <laughs> like you decide to bring in that, like, what, uh, what are you doing? that turf is faulty. Uh, I hope I, you kept the receipt. There's not enough grass in, in Yorkshire. Uh, Yorkshire grass. And then, and then from, from Tottenham, no less. 
Oh, they had, they're having uh, it was Tottenham from Tottenham? experts come in and uh, help us with the pitch. Oh, and everyone was saying, oh, thank you, Tottenham. But, you know, fans were, fans were joking around. They were saying, well, if we win against Everton, you know, we'll have to, you know, just, you know, express our gratitude to Tottenham. But if we lose, we can blame them. So, you know, I'm, I'm partially blaming Tottenham for our loss uh, yesterday. I mean, that was the, the first terrible decision that I've seen. Who do I blame that on? Who, who's, who's higher up? I'm not going to blame Bielsa. Uh, even yeah, though you I, know Bielsa probably had a say. Uh, yeah, yeah. Blame, blame it on Angus Kinnear. Ang, I, think, I think it's Angus Kinnear. Ah. Like, uh, it's like Greg Kinnear. Ah, Greg Kinnear. Angus Kinnear. Yeah. All right. I blame you for the pitch. <laughs> but, you know, at least it was both teams falling on their asses. Um, yeah. Which yeah, was that kind was, of uh, funny. Yeah, a lot of slipping and sliding yesterday. This one needs uh, what are referred to it as Bambi on ice. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind, of, yeah. kind of what it looked like. It was an ice capage show, yeah. you know, just, uh, just uh, it, was, yeah. it was bad. Definitely. Yeah, it was bad. Um, I want. I would like to give some some a little bit of props to some people, um, if you guys don't mind, and feel yeah, free to please. chime in on any of these. Um, Patrick Bamford strung yeah. together two two good matches in a yeah, row, where yeah. where he's, it's it's not all about striking, it's not all about yeah. shooting. He's he's being more important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, much less frustrated in uh, yesterday's game, more angry, more you know, and channeling that anger too. It's like yeah. any job that I've gotten, like my mom told me when I was first going into the workforce, she goes, make yourself, um, make yourself inexpendable. Uh, yeah. Do things that people don't expect, but then they come to rely on. He's now becoming better. He's now doing better hold up play. He's, mm-hmm. he's picking good passes. I just wish he could do his, his actual job a little bit better, which is get your head, hit that ball into the net. You know, down, yeah. not up. So he's yeah, doing yeah, yeah. so many couple, good things. A couple headers yesterday that sailed on him. Plus one, one hit the crossbar, but still. Yeah, but we've been giving him um, some crap, and I think I think he's he's doing much better. Uh, another guy who gets ton of crap, um, Pascal Stroy. Yeah. You know he's Great young. Man. You can't forget how young he is. He looks like he's fifty, but <laughs> he's got the European. He's like a pi- Eastern he looks European like a pirate look. or something. <laughs> but he's he's been. He's been all right, man, um, coming in there. And, and generally speaking, he has to deal with the, uh, with the opponent's best striker. So he was on Calvin, uh, not Calvin, uh, he was on Dominic Calvert-Lewin for a lot of the time. But then he almost got a goal. Uh, yeah. And if it wasn't for Dominic Calvert-Lewin <laughs> getting a touch on it, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, think, I think that, that was a goal. I think so too. Yeah. So what what is your what is your take on him lately? Oh, I think I think he's fantastic. I think I think he's doing really well. He's developing into a uh, fine center back. I mean, he's tall. He's physical. Uh, you know, he comes out of the Ajax system originally. Yeah. So he knows football. You know, I mean, you get anybody from Ajax, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean get him. You know, anybody from Ajax comes across your table. If I see that on the resume. I'm, I'm definitely giving them a look. Definitely. Um, they're still, they still have a great development system. Oh, and the, um, somebody was telling yeah. me on, uh, in the comments that uh, he's actually being courted by the Belgian national team because he, he, has, he could play for Belgium or Holland, I think. Yeah. And Belgium is, Belgium is a yeah. massive club. Belgium yeah. should do very well in the Euros. Yeah. Um, so that's no, that's no little thing. No, exactly. But I think that with Stroik, too, I think that Bielsa has seen him as sort of a personal project. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's taken um, special interest in Stroik's development, and that has helped him out tremendously. I think he did the same thing with Ben White. We had Ben White mm-hmm. uh, as well, and I think that Bielsa sort of made Ben White what he became. And I think that, that Bielsa sees a lot of the same things in Stroik that he saw in Ben White. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that you're seeing Bielsa really kind of take him under his wing and say, okay, yeah, you know, we can we can turn you into another player. Because, look, when Stroik came in last year during the start, um, I mean, you know, he played a lot of uh, central defensive midfielder. And, I mean, his passing and all was exceptional. I mean, it was really, really good. I mean, at that level, the championship level. So, I mean, he has it in him, I think, to develop even further and mature even more and become, uh, you know, a mainstay in our, in our defensive rotation. So, I think, I think he's going to be good, yeah. I mean, I, I, I love him. Yeah. Um, the, last, the last guy I would like to point out 
and this, you know, th this maybe people won't like, but uh, another guy that we've given a lot of crap to, and I know on a, on a game where you give up two goals, it's hard to point out the keeper, but for a good thing. <laughs> um, but Melier, yeah, yeah, could have done more on, he had some on monsters. both goals. He had some monster saves in the second half. But how does Dominic Calvert-Lewin get man of the match when Melier owned him after his goal? After his goal, any time you saw Cal, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, any time, I think he had two or three almost near one-on-ones with Melier, mm -hmm. and he was in his head. Yeah. I think after yeah, oh, that yeah. first stop, he skied one over the over the goal, and then Melier blocked one. And I was like, yeah, "Great stop, yeah." That one-on-one -on -one battle right now, all the confidence is with, with Melier. He waited, and he saw Dominic Calvert Lewin's hips open, and he goes, "Oh, you're gonna do that?" And boom, <laughs> he saw exactly. It was it was fantastic. And you know what? He alone, not, maybe not alone, but he was a huge part of keeping that game accessible till right. the 95th minute. Yeah, because any yeah. at, at any point if another goal went in, yeah, you guys may not have slowed down, but it, 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 been it was tougher. done. It was yeah. done. If and, and what I love, too, about Millier as well is, you know, we've talked about him earlier in the season, you know, his mistakes in distributing the ball. Yeah. Like sometimes, you, you know, he takes yeah. unnecessary chances, yeah. distributes the ball, the other team intercepts it, or they, uh, they're they able to dispossess someone and then get a shot on goal. Sometimes, you know, goes in, sometimes Millier saves it, but, you know, makes up for his mistake. But uh, if you notice the last couple of games, no mistakes in distribution. Uh, at least, yeah, I mean, yesterday, you know, his, his, his natural inclination is to look down the pitch. Mm -hmm. So if you ever notice, when Melier gets the ball, it's his, because that, that's the way that he also wants him to do it, I think, mm -hmm. is yeah. to look down the pitch, look for someone breaking down the, down the pitch and get the um, breakaway start, the counterattack started. But yesterday, I mean, he, you know, he looked down the pitch, nothing was available. You know, he just took the easy, uh, you know, roll, roll it to one of our defenders, let him do his thing. Yeah, um, yeah so I mean, I, I think that he's maturing as well. Another another uh, person too that I want to uh, put a spotlight on is Cooper. First half yesterday, uh, not very good. Uh, you know, you, he could be blamed for maybe even for both goals. Uh, but second half was excellent. Uh, he came uh, came through in the second half for us. Did a great job. Uh, I still don't know if he's Premiership quality, but. I mean, he's been improving over the course of the year, getting better and better. I mean, he's a, you know, he's a war horse back there. You know, he's very physical, does his thing. Um, so, you know, uh, I think, you know, I think Liam Cooper, somebody deserves some credit as well, especially the Leicester match I thought was his best match of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, but yesterday, this is his second half, and it was a solid second half. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, clearly, I, I'm not mentioning Rafinha just because he's oh, been well. – incredible for the past few games like he doesn't need any more praise <laughs> yeah i mean rafinha rafinha is just uh yeah he's remarkable uh, so i you know an outstanding an outstanding player and worth every single you know worth double pence that we spent on him worth double easily uh you know what's going to be sad is seeing this team get picked apart next in the summer mm. um and i hope hopefully that doesn't happen too much but um a lot of these guys are going to be looked at as cheap options that will work their fucking asses off. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, oh, and sorry, uh, I know you guys lost, but I have a lot of good performances that I was... Uh, Stuart Dallas, man, putting him in the midfield. You, you know what's so weird in fantasy? Um, I was playing fantasy, and I had to pick a defender, and I picked Stuart Dallas as a... Def no, I, I think... Um, yeah, Stuart Dallas was my defender. Stroke was an attacker. And I'm like, they don't, they don't even know where to put your guys in fantasy. <laughs> like, I was like, how is Stroke? Stroke's a center back, but they have him yeah. as a midfielder. So he's on my midfield. And then Stuart Dallas is playing in a midfield role. And now, but he's listed as a defender. It's, it's crazy. But um, Stuart Dallas has been a, a little uh, spitfire, I would call him. Um, Alioski, too. You know what? Let's stop talking about good performances in this loss because it's getting a little, uh, it's, you know what it's, I mean? It's, it's rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah no, Stuart Dallas is wonderful. Alioski still can't defend to save his life, but I like what he, he brings out He wears a number 10, man. Times. What do you expect? 
What do you expect? Yeah. Stop calling him a defender then. Stop putting him there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, shit, I think we talked the hell out of this. Yeah. I didn't really let Mark talk very much. but I don't um, say much. <laughs> he agrees with Mark, me. Mark, he looked good standing there. Yeah. Again, he, looks, he, looks, he looks very debonair. Well, I'm, very debonair. I'm, still, I'm still not really talking to him since the yeah, Wolves. Yeah, he's still trying to warm his ass up from sitting in the snow for 20 minutes. I know. Hey, the 24-hour rule, man, 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I got to gotta move on. We can, we, we can uh, lament our, you know, our problems for 24 hours, and you have to move on after that. Yeah, man. Um, well, and you, you guys, you're allowed to win for that long. Yeah, you have uh, Crystal Palace coming up, right? Mm. Yeah. That, so we, we owe them. Yeah, we you owe, owe them Palace big. Time. You owe them big time, and they're, they're one of these weird teams, too, who can come out and look terrible, and then the next week look great, and then the next week look terrible. It's not really like when Zaha plays or when he doesn't play or when Eze plays. It's just right. weird. It's, 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 yeah. So, and it's, and it's also, you know, I mean, sometimes football is like boxing, right? It's about matchups. Yeah. So it's about like different types of, uh, of fighter, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, different styles. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think, you know, Palace, our style matches up really, doesn't match up really well with Palace. I think, I think Palace, because of their pace, mm -hmm. because of the fact that they can counterattack so well, that's what kind of hurt us in the first match against them, yeah. and and I think that we have to be prepared for that in the in the next in this match. I mean, we have to be ready for them to counterattack and counterattack really quickly uh, with people like Zaha yeah. and Eze. Uh, they can get down the pitch in a hurry, you know. So that. Well, we lost James. I think my computer just died. So. Um... Yeah, I guess we'll call it from here. We said everything. He's, he's, you gotta cut him off at some point. Otherwise, he'll just keep talking. So, um, thank you, Apple, for cutting James off. And um, listen, we'll be back next week or this weekend, actually. We'll be talking a bunch of stuff all weekend. So, tune in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell and join us on Patreon. You can help us out on the stoop to get this uh, snow shovel. Yeah, this costs money. All right. And so, now for our best James impression. Leads, leads, leads. Oh, leads, leads. leads that leads, was a leads. terrible James impression. Sorry. Leads, leads, leads. leads. Who does that? I don't know. <laughs> Get out of here.